Hi, this is Noelle with the Garrett Paint YouTube channel. Today we'll be talking about an extremely sought after extinct pigment, quinacridone gold. It goes by many names, PO49, Synquasia Gold, DuPont, YT218D. It's based on a five ring polycyclic system. It's got a gorgeous, deep, rich, reddish brown mass tone that turns orange in the midtone and a beautiful pale golden in the undertone. Though, it can be underwhelming when unground. Our quinacridone gold is from the DuPont Color Company from around 1958. Ooh, vintage. Here at Gara Paint, we grind our pigments down to a Hegman 8 and disperse them for ease of use. Today, I'll be troubleshooting some common issues painters often face when using the pigment dispersions in watercolor specifically. We have found out that one needs to add something to bulk the pigment to avoid flocculation. To quote Wikipedia, Flocculation, in the field of chemistry, is a process by which colloidal particles come out of suspension to sediment under the form of flock, flake, either spontaneously or due to the addition of a clarifying Wing. agent. The pigment particles like to grab onto each other and onto themselves as opposed to meshing nicely with the binder. So what we've done to remedy this is introduce a bulking agent. We have begun experimenting with bulking agents and plasticizers. I made a one-to-one -one paste of glycerin and cornstarch to add to the pigment dispersion before the watercolor binder is added. It is critical that you do this because as you can see in the video, when you add the watercolor binder directly to the pigment dispersion, it does not like that and will flocculate wildly. <laughs> The addition of your cornstarch, aka dextrin, and your glycerin, aka your plasticizing agent, before the addition of the gum arabic is critical for it not to flocculate and to have a beautiful, rich, transparent color. Here you can see how I demonstrate that. Now that we've got a good example of the pigment dispersion's true potential, um, I'm going to add some watercolor binder. I like to cold process my gum arabic one part to one part water. Um, keep it refrigerated as it will spoil if you don't and check on it. Give it a sniff. If it smells fermented, it's bad. Throw it away. It won't work as well as fresh gum arabic. I use slightly less water because gum arabic is a very weak binder and I want to ensure that I'm not over adding water because I assume a lot of water is coming in from the dispersions. Here I've included a tentative watercolor recipe. I say tentative because each pigment is different. Some pigments play very nicely with the gum arabic, naphthol vermilion, for example, chromophol 3G, uh, thalodioxazine plays very nicely. Uh, we have a list available upon request of pigments that play well. Um, I'd also be happy to speak on the phone about it. Um, I have several examples using dry pigment that we also sell. Um, I'm trying to be very careful as quinacridone is pretty light and can get kind of migratory. I had to clean my palette very well after this video. Um, so I'm just putting down some pigment and making a little pigment and water paste. And now I'm adding my gum arabic. And I added a healthy amount of gum arabic because quinacridones tend to need a lot of binder. Whereas something else like an earth pigment you could do maybe like 50-50 and be crystal cool. Um, and I just went ahead and painted that out onto a swatch sheet. And look how gross and granular and weird and chunky chunky it looks. Um, now I'm going to take my glass muller and mull the pigment in the binder, which is impossible to do in acrylic, or at least inadvisable. And, you know, it looks all right, but nothing beats that dispersion. Um, so here all three are together. And that is how I handle the dispersions in watercolor. Thank you so much for watching the video. Um, subscribe to the channel if you'd like more content like this. And thank you so very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.